and another one, and another one. Heads up, and another one, and another one. How could you not be amped about a fight like this? Two lightweight fighters with all the belts on the line. You got Serrano who's been dominant, doing her thing for for the for, for years. You know. Let's see if I have office I'm going to hold on. It's up, it's up. Office back here, y'all. <laughs> Word. My work. I'm gonna be in the office in the back, all right? Yeah. In the office in the back, yeah. Chopping it up about this fight here. <laughs> Trying to like going live at work, man. What's up, baby? Yeah. All right. Chill, chill. That's how y'all do, man. So live at work. We gonna break this fight down, man. We gonna break this fight down. We gonna chop it up. We gonna break it down to the ground. So they just announced. Well, they've been announced, but they formally announced Amanda Serrano. Amanda Serrano taking on Katie Taylor. April 30th at Madison Square Garden. You know what I'm saying? That's a beautiful thing right there for boxing. It's a beautiful thing for New York City. That's a beautiful thing for women's boxing also. You know, you got two of the top best fighters in the world finally taking on each other. Everybody been waiting to see this. Everybody been wanting to see this type of fight for quite some time, and now we finally getting it. And it's in the garden, baby. It's in the garden. Ain't, ain't nothing better than having a fight in the garden, B. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be stacked. It's going to be packed. I'm pretty sure Jake Paul's going to get himself on the card. Uh, maybe he'll fight another Tyron Woodley type of dude. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? But... You know, this this fight card is going to be packed. It's going to be solid. Eddie Hearn got his people from Matchroom Boxing on the squad. They're going to be they going to bring some fighters on. What more can you say about this fight, man? It's a huge stack card. It's a huge fight card. Next week they're going to be face to face in um on February second live from um, NYC. Um, they're going to be face to face. They're going to chop it up. They're going to talk about the fight. Uh, two pound for pound stars. Head they headlining, bro. Let's, let's keep it a buck here. They headlining. They, they, they ain't being featured. They are the main event of this card. When have you seen two women main event the card? Especially in Madison Square Garden. They are the first to do this. This how this is how this is how epic and huge this is. Amanda Serrano from Puerto Rico, from Brooklyn. Katie Taylor from all the way from Ireland. <laughs> you know what I mean? They are headlining in Madison Square Garden. Do you know how much money is going to be made to see? I'm telling you, it's going to be a lot of people are going to pay to see this fight. People are going to pay to see this fight. Believe it or not, people are going to pay to see this fight, and they're going to have to stack it with a great with a great undercard. They're going to have to stack it with a great undercard, man. Matchroom Boxer is going to have to stack this with a great undercard. Pound for pound female fighters, they are headlining, and they are the first to do it in, in 140 years of boxing history. They are headlining the main event at Madison Square Garden. You haven't had women fighters headline Madison Square Garden fights. Yeah, yeah, you had you had Serrano, had the Hardy. They headlined in the, they headlined in the Hula. I don't even know if they headlined in the Hula Theater. I know it was a great fight though. But I don't even know if they had line in the Hula Theater. But what I do know is, right here, right now, Madison Square Garden, it's going down. Katie Taylor, the iconic, the Irish icon, that's what they call it, the Irish icon, 20 and 0, 6 KOs, is putting all her lightweight belts on the line. She's undisputed. That would be the WBO, the WBA, the WBC, and the ring. 
I, and IBF, excuse me. IBF, WBA, WBO, WBC, WBA in the ring. She put all her belts on the line. I guess Serrano, who who just been just just blasting everybody out the out the woodwork. No matter what division she going, she 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 coming away with a title. She's and she ain't just going there beating mandatory. She's going there beating the world champions. You know what I'm saying? She's beating the world champions because the world champions are beating up on the mandatory. And she going there to dominate the world champions of the divisions. So y'all can't say you know this that and the third about Serrano. Serrano beats the best of the best in each division that she fights in. Puerto, so Puerto Rico sensation Serrano 42 and 1, 30 KOs, the Southpaw. Oh boy. Signed with the Brooklyn Southpaw, signed with Jake Paul's most valuable promotions. I think that's what it's called. I gotta read it over. Um she's just been doing what she needed to do ever since she's into the sport, man. She was the 2021 female fighter of the year for the zone for ESPN and WBC and others. So they they got her. They got her out there. Like, come on, man. Her quote is, when I turned professional, my goal was to be involved in huge fights. So the headline, Madison Square Garden, man. Dudes don't, there's, there's a lot of dudes that don't get the headline of Madison Square Garden, let alone fight in Madison Square Garden. And she's getting opportunity to headline to be the main event. Like WWE Raw and all that, the main event, to come out with whatever music she want to blast. You know what I'm saying? You know Kodo going to be in the building. You know Tito, Tito Trinidad going to be in the building. You know all the Puerto Ricans coming out to support Amanda Serrano, bro. I'm telling you now, all the Puerto Ricans are coming out to support Amanda Serrano. This is going to be such a huge crowd because you're going to, because you know, Irish support their own as well. And one thing in boxing, when it, when with certain certain um fighters fight, they come out and support. You know what I'm saying? Ricky Hatton fight. What's the song? Oh, Ricky Hatton, oh, Ricky Hatton. When Tyson Fury come out, you get a lot of support too. Katie Taylor is gonna have that crowd lit, and the Irish fans are gonna come out there. It's gonna be an amazing fight. Katie Taylor hands is fast. She's one of the best female boxers in boxing, period, hands down. Undisputed champion, former Olympic gold medalist. You can't take nothing away from Katie Taylor. You can't. There's also there's also going to be a little animosity there because, you know, Katie Taylor did beat Amanda Serrano's sister, which is Cindy. You know what I mean? They fought a couple of years back in, um, in Boston. <laughs> in Boston, with a, with a lot of the Irish guys stop at. Stop over. Stop over me in Boston. Give me some tea. I ain't got no Boston. I ain't got no Boston accent or no Irish accent. I'm out here front. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But with that being said, man, great fight. Great fight. I'm hoping I plan I'm hoping well, I plan to be in the building for this. This is gonna be this is gonna be a huge fight for the year. And I'm excited because I know come on in. I'm excited because I know that the, the um the other cars gonna be going to the store. I'm going to lunch. When I get back, I'll be ready to do. Okay. All right. Look down. I'll be right back. I'll holler. You know what I mean? I'm at work, y'all. Getting it in. Got some things I got to do before I slide out tomorrow night and head over to see the boss man in Cleveland. <laughs> Just hope I can make it there because it's going to be a huge snowstorm. So I'm supposed to be going to um, Cleveland. I'm supposed to be going to Cleveland to see the, to see the Don King card. With a um Alunga Makuba taking on his his homeboy, Diaso Diaso for the WBC Cruiserweight Champion Championship. Rumor has it Canelo's gonna be in the building. I highly doubt Canelo's gonna be in Cleveland. If he gonna be in Cleveland, he gonna be on Cleveland on Zoom. He ain't gonna be in no building. What Canelo look like being in Cleveland? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh, Canelo gonna be in Cleveland. What the hell is Canelo gonna be in Cleveland doing? Come on, man. You crazy? Canelo gonna be on Zoom waving at people. Hi, I'm Canelo. <laughs> Word be. So yeah, man. What y'all thoughts on this fight, man? Eddie Hearn is bigging it up. Jake Paul. Oh, yeah, most valuable promotions. I knew I was right. MVP, most valuable promotions. Man, he's still in that's that's a big L line, man. He's still in Big L, man. He's still in Big L's line, bro. Stealing it. He swag jack Big L. Come on, man. <laughs> you steal a big L, man. You can't steal big L's lines, bro. Which I think, though, man, Amanda Serrano taking on Katie Taylor. Live, direct, Madison Square Garden, April 30th. It's going to be on the zone. It's going to be shown wherever it's going to be shown at. Tickets on sale. This this coming, um, let's see here. Tickets is on sale. Pre-sale tickets is on sale February 3rd. 
right? And then they got the other tickets that's going to be on sold on February 4th. Tickets start at $56, bro. That's a good price, B. That's a good price. That means if you jump on it early, you can get a good ticket and possibly be near ringside. I don't even want to be ringside. I don't want to be near side, ringside. Cause you know me, I be, I be, I be ringside. I be wild and I be rooting for, the, I be rooting for certain fighters ringside. You know what I'm saying? But this fight right here, oh, I cannot wait, man. I cannot not wait. It's, it's, it's you. I'm just, I, I, I love boxing, and I enjoy female boxing so much. And I respect the grind of, you know, where they've come from and what they have, what they've had to do. And it's just amazing to see both of them where they're at right now in the sport and, and taking the sport to another level. This is what I think Clarissa Shields should have been doing or should have had the opportunity to do. But they got her over there fighting in Canada and London because she's going to sign with Sky Sports. So her next fight, if she gets past this lady in Canada, she got her next fight is going to be in London against Savannah Marshall. Which basically she needs to take care of that, you know what I mean? Because Van Marshall is the only person to ever defeat her inside a boxing ring, you know what I'm saying? So she definitely got to, you know, get her, she got to go over there and take care of that BI. But it's like, you know, certain fighters and women boxing should be on the forefront, should be, you know, supported just like men's boxing. And I'm happy to see that they finally bigging up two of the best in the sport. They got them locked in. They got them ready to go at it. You know what I mean? And they're and they getting paid the way they're supposed to be getting paid. That's number one. They're getting paid for, for doing what they do. They, they are getting paid for what they're doing. I don't know who's getting paid more because Taylor is the champion. But we all know you can't fill up them seats without a, without a dancing partner. And what better dance supporting to have to fill up the seats of Madison Square Garden than Amanda Serrano? Like you gotta see the bigger picture here, man. She can she can fill out seats, like cause she fought on the Joshua undercard, so she filled out a section or two. You know what I mean? She could Taylor. I think Taylor alone probably can. I wouldn't say sell out the um the hula theater. She would have. She would need a good dance supporter to do that. But Madison Square Garden and with a great undercard, because they're gonna they're, they're gonna have to make a good undercard to sell out the garden. The goal is to sell out the garden. The goal is not just to be headlining and, and be like, okay, yeah, we we did good and we we had a couple of seats left. No, the goal is to sell out the garden. Every time promoters put on a fight, they want to sell out. They want to sell out and create more openings to put more cheers in. You know what I'm saying? That's the that's the role of a promoter to to sell, 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 sell. Go watch trading places when when they were selling at the end and they kept they they couldn't sell no more. It was like sell, sell, sell. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the goal of the role of a promoter to sell, sell, sell. The goal for this fight is to sell as many seats you can or possible, and they are going to push, 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 and I'm, and, and they're going on a and they're going on a tour. So. If they think they're gonna catch Serrano slipping, you're not gonna catch her slipping because wherever Serrano goes, she she trains. No matter where she goes, she's gonna get she's gonna step in the gym and get in there and she's gonna let them hands go. The break I'm a, I'm gonna give her a fight analysis, a breakdown as we go along, because there's a lot that both fighters do very, very well. Each fighter does have flaws in them. Every fighter has a flaw in them. Every person in the world has a flaw in them. So everybody's not perfect at what they do. You know what I'm saying? So as as the fight progresses, as they go on their world tours, as they talk and do this and do that, I'm going to break down. My, I'm going to give fight fans my own personal fight analysis. Um, right now and forever, I'm going for Serrano. That's, that's fam. That's my heart right there. You know what I'm saying? I think Serrano can stop Katie Taylor, but there's certain things she's going to have to do to stop Katie Taylor. You know what I'm saying? And this, she, she's going to have to. She, she, she could do it. She can do it. And, 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 I, and I can, I can see the round. I could probably see it maybe eighth, ninth round. And and and, and, and I'm gonna tell you early. It's all gonna be. So it's gonna be about the body. As long as Samara goes to the body, Katie Taylor's gone. As long as long as Samara don't head hunt and get happy, go to that body. Katie Taylor be going by eighth, ninth round. People can't take Serrano body punches, yo. Serrano dropped dudes in training, bro. Serrano, Serrano dropped dudes in training. You think Katie Taylor going to take these shots? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. All Serrano got to do is go to the body. Just go body, body, body. Don't head hunt. 
Because Katie Taylor can move ahead. And she got fast hands. And, she's, and Katie Taylor is really a natural counterpuncher. When you watch Katie Taylor fight, she's basically a natural counterpuncher. Serrano always is the, she always is like the lead. She's always the, the fighter to come forward. She always bringing the aggression, bringing, bringing, bringing the power. If she fights, it doesn't fight with just her head straight on and coming with power, then, you know, she'll, she'll probably, the fight will probably last longer. I mean, the fight probably won't last longer. If she just comes in with the knockout mindset, like, I'm going to knock her out and do this, that, no. The fight is going to last longer because Katie Taylor's going to do a lot, do as much as she can, clinch, grab, hold, everything. But if Serrano uses some form of finesse, and she has finesse, Serrano has finesse, but her power is so overwhelming that at times it gets the better of her and her opponents. <laughs> Because she'd be hitting her opponent so easily and so hard that her opponent's be like, yo, that's enough of that. I'm out of here. Break down that body. Go to that body. You will get Katie Taylor out within eight, nine rounds. Katie Taylor conditioning is not all that. It's not. I, I watched that close up when she was fighting Del Delphine Persoon. And, and everybody knew that Persoon. I mean, yeah, she was a bigger fighter, but everybody knew that Persoon won that fight, man. Everybody knew that. On the Joshua Ruiz on the card a couple of years ago. She has since come back and beat Persoon. And others, you know what I mean? Cause she cause she can box. Katie Taylor, Katie Taylor can really, really box. Hands off. You gotta, you gotta respect her boxing game for real, for real. With that being said, I'm still going with Serrano. And I'm going early, predict the Serrano, eighth ninth round, eighth, ninth round stoppage. Female championship fights don't go but ten as it is. Um, they only go two minutes. Who's to say? Who's to say if this fight goes the distance? Who's to say if this would be the first fight to go three minutes each round for a female fighter in boxing? That's a question that needs to be asked. I'm gonna be live and direct from that post conference. I'm gonna have my camera up right. I'm I'm getting it in, bro. I'm definitely getting it in. I'm interviewing everybody here. I'm I'm getting interviews with everybody. I'm going. I'm, I'm gonna holler at Jake Paul. I'm gonna take his hat. I'm gonna see you touch my hat, bro. Yeah, yeah. Take your hat, bro. It's, your, it's my hat now, punk. <laughs> but take Jake Paul hat. You know what I mean? I'ma holla at Eddie Hearn. I'm going to holla at um Sobrano. I'm going to holla at Taylor. Cause cause this is a mega fight, man. Two female fighters headlining. Headlining Madison Square Garden. It don't get no bigger and better than that. It don't get no bigger and better than that. If y'all like boxing, if y'all really love boxing, y'all need to be clapping it up. Y'all need to be applauding this fight. Y'all need to be saluting it. Y'all need to be talking about it. You know, making sure people buy into it. Both female fighters, they deserve the love and respect from the fans. They deserve to get paid the way they're supposed to get paid. Man, fantastic fight. I'm excited. Hopefully y'all guys will get excited. I'm going to be back soon enough because... I'm just so in awe of this right here. I'm just, I'm just like, wow, this is such a, a remarkable thing that they're doing in the sport of boxing, man. And and we and we need this. We need this, man. We we need to keep the sport going. Make sure you get um, Mr. yeah, you know, in the words of Leon. <laughs> Make sure you got um, uh, Mr. Leon. You know you ain't right. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm gonna get Mr. I'm gonna get Mr. Muhammad on it, but I already know how he gonna do. He gonna talk his ish. And say he don't care about the fight because he ain't making no money off it. Y'all know, y'all know what I like. Y'all know what kind of box that I like. You, you, you go to the graveyard or the funeral home. You go to the hospital or the funeral home. This, this ain't nothing to me. This ain't gonna nothing to me. I ain't making no money off it. I don't give an F about it. I don't give an F about it. That's how he is, man. And then, and then he turn around and see him on fight week. <laughs> Talk about yo, let me get a ticket. Let me get a ticket. <laughs> Where you at, Zavis? Where you at, Zavis? I want a ticket. Yeah, all right, bro. You ain't slick, Mister Bobby. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be with him. Um, I'm, I think I'm. A, I think I might get with him either tonight or definitely probably tomorrow. I definitely probably see him tomorrow. I gotta link up with him because we we supposed to be going out to Cleveland to this Don King fight. So um, hopefully he can make it. If not, it is what it is, you know. But we'll see what happens. He had you frustrated. Yeah, he always do it, bro. He always. He, uh, listen, man. I, and, the, and the ill shit is like, this is me off for real, yo. <laughs> and he know it. Like we, we, I, 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 I throw a dart at him. I mess with him. I'm, you know, I play around with him. I piss him off. And then he, he would do it like slightly. He would do it like subtly to me, and I'd be like, yo, why are you me right there? Why, why are you acting like that? And then you yelling. You gotta understand. 
When you, when you, when, I'm a grown ass man. We all grown ass men. I'm not gonna take nobody yelling at me. I'm, I'm just not gonna take the disrespect, bro. I'm not. And he likes to yell at people like, like people their kids. Like you can't talk to people like that, bro. Spit flying everywhere. Yeah, that's why I sit on the side when he talk, man. <laughs> That's, he's my he fair, but he be wildin'. Match room would be smart to put Zang and, and Nikita Bibi on the undercard. I agree, yo. M easy, I agree, bro. Because what it does is it, it stretches, it stretches, it stretches out, it stretches out both of them. Because um Bobby, he's be, he's basically a hometown fighter. I mean, he is from Virginia, but he's training out of the Sosa camp, right? In Brooklyn. He's been training out of the social camp for quite some time, so it would be a good look for him. They got to have some homegrown fighters on this car. Absolutely right. I think it would be great to have Zang on the car, too, because you get a lot of Asians to come out. Big, strong, big, strong Southpaw. You know what I'm saying? You get, get a lot of Asians to come out and support him. It would be smart to have him on the card as well. It, you know what I'm saying? It, it, there's some fighters that match with boxing is going to have to is going to have to bring out, put on the card, because you're gonna to have to get that hometown. You're gonna to have to get that hometown love. You're going to have to get that hometown love. Maybe he. Maybe they'll put on. Um, what's the young boy name? Um, the Albanian bear. What's his name? His name slips my mind right now. Nah, I don't think Canelo gonna fight Charlo, bro. I really don't think so. I think that's Fugues. I think that's just talk. Honestly speaking, I think that's just talk. I, I do not think. I do not think Canelo's gonna fight Charlo. I'd be surprised. I'd be hella surprised if that fight is made, honestly speaking. Bring yeah, bring out Montana Love. He brings he brings some he'll, he'll bring some fans from um he'll bring some fans from um from Cleveland. You know what I'm saying? He he get I mean, people don't really know him out here like that in New York. I I met him um I actually got an interview. If you go check my page out, I was actually one of the first cats to interview Montana Love. If you go check out my interviews, I was he, he came through the city and I linked up with him and I did an interview with him and his manager at the time. Um, this guy that does a lot of great barbecue in the city of Cleveland. I linked up with both of them and we went to the studio and I did a pretty good, I think I did a pretty good interview and we chopped it up, talked about a lot of things. If you check out the page, you'll see it on my page. Um, with that being said, yeah, Montana Love, he bring a lot of people out. I don't know if he's going to have a lot of people to, to come out from, um, from, from Cleveland to actually come see him fight in the city. You know what I'm saying? But you never know. I mean, you never know. You know what I'm saying? Oh, shoot. Hold on, bro. What time is this? All right. So I'm going to go on this. I'm going to go on this podcast, this interview with Chris Colbert. And um, I'm going to come back to y'all. I'm, I registered to be on that. Yeah, Rashad Monty. That's what I was talking about, Outlaw. Rashad Monty. That's exactly what I was talking about, the Albania bed. All right. I'm going to come back to y'all soon enough. I'm going to go on this. Matter of fact, let me stay on the line with y'all. Yeah, let me stay in line with y'all. Go on this, go on this podcast, this Zoom joint. Hold on. Let's see here. I go here. Yeah, let me go on this with y'all. Open the Zoom. Let's see. Recording in progress. You're just letting the uh, the press populate the uh, the webinar, and then we'll get started with Brian Custer. All right, all right. All right, so my audio is off and everything. All right, so I'm gonna come back to y'all in a few. I'm gonna talk, come back to y'all about this Chris Cobra fight. Peace. Is there a desire not?